I've been married to a wonderful man for 30 years. We have three awesome adult children. One of them happens to be autistic. Now, I could bore y'all with statistics of the autism spectrum or tell you how difficult it is to raise someone with autism, but I'd rather not do that. I'd rather tell y'all how our family has been strengthened by autism. I talked to Adam to make sure he was okay with me not only writing this story, but reading it to over 300 people. His response, do I have to come see you? <laughs> Mom, you know I don't like to waste my days off. As challenging as autism can be, it is also very humbling seeing life through his eyes. Before Adam's autism diagnosis, my mother's intuition told me something was off. He was much more active than his older brother Lee and older sister Erin. Jokingly, I would say, if he was our first, he would be the last. <laughs> Adam was asked to leave the same preschool his siblings attended for hugging his classmates too hard. After getting diagnosed, working with his pediatrician, psychiatrist, therapist, and special ed teachers, we finally felt we could move forward. We gathered all the info we could on autism, books, articles, seminars. Rick and I heard Temple Grandin speak twice. As parents, our goal for our kids were to give them every opportunity to be the very best they could be. However, we realized with Adam things would be different. We've been going to the same church since Adam was three. Adam would try to blow out the candles when we'd bring him up to be blessed at communion and crawl under the pews during service. So Rick and I took turns taking Lee and Aaron to church in Sunday school. The first time Adam had to light the candles as an acolyte, I prayed he wouldn't burn the church down. <laughs> My prayers were answered. During his first communion classes, the pastor and I had to reassure Adam that he wasn't really drinking Jesus' blood and that communion wafers weren't snacks. Rick coached Lee and Aaron in youth basketball. Adam was excited when he was in first grade and was old enough to attend basketball clinic like his siblings. After the first night, Rick told me he could dribble great. He just kept dribbling into the bathroom and wouldn't come out. <laughs> After doing the same thing the second night, we decided Adam wasn't ready. Adam excels at sports through Special Olympics. He has participated in swimming, bowling, volleyball, and most recently, softball. Music is always playing in our house. Rick loves rock and I love show tunes. Lee plays the trumpet, piano, and acoustic guitar. Aaron did chorus in school and sings with our contemporary band at church. Adam is the percussionist. When Adam was in second grade, his special ed teacher brought him in a junior drum set. If he reached his daily goal, he got to play. I have a picture of him jamming out on that set with his tongue out like this. <laughs> in high school, Adam was a member of the marching band's award-winning drumline. The same band Lee played trumpet and Aaron did color guard. Adam now plays the drum set at church twice a month. My heart is happy as I watch him play, and he still does the tongue thing. Adam met his first girlfriend at Roosevelt Warm Springs Rehabilitation Center, similar to a college for kids with disabilities. I would talk to Adam several times a week and one day asked him if he had kissed his girlfriend. Yes, he said, I liked it. <laughs> During another phone conversation, Adam told me he and his girlfriend were almost written up. When I asked him why, he told me they weren't just kissing, they were locking lips. <laughs> Try not to laugh, I told them to stay out of trouble and was relieved as I hung up the phone. Adam works 40 hours a week at the donor door at Goodwill. He is very proud of lifting heavy things. He reminds Lee and Aaron to call him their younger brother, not little brother. At six foot four, 200 pounds, he is bigger than both of them. There are so many stories and not enough time. Rick and I have three awesome adult children. One of them happens to be autistic.